10th May, started bright and clear. For the past few days, I had been surrounded by world leaders, who were coming to pay their respects before the inauguration. The inauguration, of the first democratic government of South Africa. The inauguration would be the largest gathering ever, of international leaders on South African soil. The ceremonies took place in the lovely Sandystone Amphitheatre, formed by the Union buildings in Pretoria. For decades, this had been the seat of white supremacy, and now, it was the site of a gathering of different colours and nations, for the installation of South Africa's first democratic, non-racial government. On that lovely autumn day, I was accompanied by my daughter, Zinani. On the podium, Mr. de Klerk, was first sworn in as second deputy president. Then, Thabo Mbeki was sworn in, as first deputy president. When it was my turn, I pledged to obey and uphold the constitution, and to devote myself to the well-being of the republic and its people. To the assembled guests, and the watching world, I said, Today, all of us do, by our presence here. Give glory and hope to newborn liberty. Out of the experience of an extraordinary human disaster, that lasted too long, must be born a society, of which all humanity will be proud. We, who were outlaws not so long ago. The people were outlaws, because many countries had broken off diplomatic relations, with South Africa. Have today been given the right to be host to the nations of the world, on our own soil. We thank all of our international guests, for having come to take possession with the people of our country, of what is, after all, a common victory for justice, for peace, for human dignity. We have achieved our political emancipation. Emancipation, freedom from restrictions. We pledge ourselves, to liberate all our people, from the continuing bondage of poverty, deprivation, suffering, gender and other discrimination. Never, never, and never again shall it be, that this beautiful land will again experience the oppression of one by another. The sun shall never set on such a glorious human achievement. Let freedom reign. God bless Africa. A few moments later, we all lifted our eyes in wonder, as a spectacular array of South African jets, helicopters and troop carriers, roared in perfect formation, over the Union buildings. It was not only a display of pinpoint precision and military force, but a demonstration, of the military's loyalty to democracy, to a new government, that had been freely and fairly elected. Only moments before, the highest generals of the South African Defense Force and Police, saluted me and pledged their loyalty. I was aware of the fact, that some years before, they would not have saluted me, but arrested me. Finally, a V-shaped pattern of Impala jets left a smoke trail of the black, red, green, blue and gold of the new South African flag. That day, two national anthems were sung. White San, and Kozisi Kileli Afrika, while the black San, Di Stem. Although that day no one knew the lyrics, but they would soon know it by heart. On the day of the inauguration, I was overwhelmed with a sense of history. In the first decade of the 20th century, a few years after the Anglo-Boer War, and before my own birth, the white-skinned people of South Africa, erected a system of racial domination. Against the dark-skinned people. The structure they created, formed the basis of one of the harshest, most inhumane societies, the world has ever known. Now, in the last decade of the 20th century, that system had been replaced by one, that recognized the rights and freedoms of all peoples, regardless of the color of their skin. That they had come about through the unimaginable sacrifices, of thousands of my people, people whose suffering and courage can never be counted or repaid. I felt that day, that I was simply the sum of all those African patriots, who had gone before me. Patriot, nationalist. I was pained. That I was not able to thank them, and also that, they were not able to see, what their sacrifices had wrought. The policy of apartheid. Apartheid, 
domination of whites over blacks. Created a deep and lasting wound in my country and my people. All of us will spend many years recovering from that intense pain. But the decades of oppression and brutality had another unintended effect. It produced patriots like Oliver Tambo, Walter Sisjalu, Chief Lutuli, Yusuf Dadu, Bram Fisher, Robert Sobuk. Perhaps it requires such depths of oppression to create such heights of character. My country is rich in the minerals and gems that lie beneath its soil, but its greatest wealth is its people, finer and truer than the purest diamonds. It is from these patriots that I learned the meaning of courage. I have seen men and women give their lives for an idea. I have seen men withstand attacks and torture without breaking, showing a strength that is beyond imagination. I learned that courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. No one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin, or his background, or his religion. People learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can learn to love, for love comes more naturally to the heart than hate. Even in the most terrible days in prison, when my comrades and I were given pain beyond our ability to withstand, I would see a sign of humanity in one of the guards. It was enough to encourage me and keep me going. Man's goodness is a flame that can be hidden but never extinguished. In life, every man has two obligations. Obligations? Duties. One, obligation to his family, to his parents, to his wife and children, and the other, obligation to his people, his community, his country. In a country like South Africa, it was almost impossible for a man of my birth and color to fulfill both of those obligations. In South Africa, a man of color who attempted to live as a human being was punished and isolated. In South Africa, a man who tried to fulfill his duty to his people, was ripped from his family and his home, and was forced to live a life apart. I was not born with a hunger to be free. I was born to be free. Free in every way I could know. Free to run in the fields near my mother's hut. Free to swim in the clear stream that ran through my village. Free to roast mealies under the stars, and free to ride the slow-moving bulls. As long as I obeyed my father, and the customs of my tribe, I was not troubled by the laws of man and God. But when I discovered that my childhood freedom was an illusion, I began to hunger for it. At first, as a student, I wanted freedom only for myself. The temporary freedoms of being able to stay out at night, read what I pleased, and go where I chose. Later, as a young man in Johannesburg, I longed for the basic and honorable freedoms of achieving my potential, of earning my keep, of marrying and having a family. The freedom not to be obstructed in a lawful life. But slowly, I saw that not only I was not free, but my brothers and sisters were also not free. I saw that it was not just my freedom that was curtailed, but the freedom of everyone who looked like I did. That is when I joined the African National Congress, and that is when the hunger for my own freedom became the greater hunger for the freedom, freedom of my people. It was this desire for the freedom of my people to live their lives with dignity and self-respect that inspired my life, that transformed me from a frightened man into a bold one, from a law-abiding lawyer into a criminal, from a family-loving husband into a man without home, and from a life-loving man, into a monk. I am not more self-sacrificing than the other patriots, but I found that I could not even enjoy the poor and limited freedoms I was allowed when I knew my people were not free. Freedom is indivisible. The chains on any one of my people were the chains on all of them. The chains on all of my people were the chains on me. I knew that the oppressor must be liberated just as surely as the oppressed. Now you'll say, why does the oppressor need to be liberated? 
the oppressor oppresses the other people, so why does he himself need to be liberated? An oppressor, a man who takes away another's freedom, is a prisoner of hatred, dislike, and narrow-mindedness. I am not free, if my freedom is taken from me. In the same way, I am not free, if I am taking someone's freedom. Therefore, both, the oppressor, and the oppressed, need to be liberated.